Commissioner Tagney to do the city manager update one more time. Okay, parking permits, uh, resident parking permits are on sale. Permits may be, per permits may be purchased at the clerk's office from 307 City Hall, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, or by mail. For more information, visit longbeachny.gov slash city clerk. The holiday season is over, but we can still give what we can all year long. The City of Long Beach has partnered with the local food pantry to collect food donations year-round for those who need it, at the mo need it the most in our community. More information provided on the flyers at the front of the room. Uh, as you saw when you came in, the Edward Boulevard project is moving along nicely. The city hosted an open house to discuss improvements to Edward Boulevard on Monday, January 28th. The project, funded by the New York State Department of Transportation, and the design of community input will give Edwards Boulevard a complete streets makeover. They be safer for pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorists, and will improve flood mitigation. Full renderings of the closed project are available outside, as well as at longbeachny.gov slash public works. Comments can be emailed to economic development at longbeachny.gov through tomorrow. All right, thank you. Um, I would just like to add if uh, anyone came from the West End and saw all the work um, on Park, right in front of the West End Firehouse. Um, so PSE&G is out there uh, increasing the capacity of our electrical grid. Uh, and I want to thank them for being very proactive. Um, they're, it, they're expecting an increase in the power usage uh, this upcoming summer. I want to thank DPW for uh, working with them and making sure the process went along smoothly. So, uh, just so everyone knows what's going on out there. Dave? First public hearing, hearing this evening is for a refunding bond ordinance of the City of Long Beach authorizing a refund of all or a portion of certain outstanding serial bonds of said city, stating the plan of refunding appropriating the issuance of $12,200,000 refunding bonds of said city or so much thereof as may be necessary to finance said appropriation and making certain de 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 determinations all relative there to. Just for a point of order, there is a uh, minor misprint in the uh, noticing the city council, uh, the last two lines of the legislative memo uh, don't have the correct figures. There was just a little bit of miscommunication between a ban and a bond, uh, but as it turns out, we are going to actually save even more money. Uh, this money will, when if this ordinance is approved, the money will only be borrowed if it reaches at least the 3% savings. So unless we're going to save a substantial amount of money, we're looking closer to six, um, we will not be refinancing. So this is just the authority to enter into that negotiation. All right, so uh, just to be clear, the item itself is all correctly written in the ordinance, but the uh, numbers in the legislative memo are slightly off. Um, and I'll ask uh, Christy Hightower to come up and just explain it in layman's terms what we're doing here. Essentially, we're refinancing, saving money, and not increasing the duration of the uh, borrowing. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. So early last month, um, the city's fifth advisor identified a uh, refunding opportunity for the city, which is basically what you call a refinancing when the government does it. So what this refunding does is it will save the city um, the new projections that just came out late last week, upwards of $800,000 over the life of the remainder of the bond. That works out to about seventy dollars to $75,000 per year in interest savings for the city. So what this does is it issues new debt to be able to, at a lower interest rate, to be able to retire old debt at a higher interest rate. And the difference between the two interest rates is where the city gets the savings. It does not increase the outstanding debt, it does not increase how long the city will be in debt related to these bonds, and it doesn't affect any, anything else. It's just simply switching one for the other and taking the interest in. You had told the council earlier that uh, New York State wouldn't even approve it if it doesn't save us at least 3%. Right, so all, all refunding bonds go up to New York State for approval, and they look for a minimum of 3% 3 percent present value savings. This, this one, based on current projections, is going to save the city just under 6% in present value. Okay, and in terms of the length of the two bonds that it's going to pay off? It's not changed. It's not changed. But does the actual amount of the debt is reduced in some way? Based on the projections, yes. Right now, the, um, the outstanding debt is about 
11.9 million at the end of this fiscal year, and the city will probably issue about 11.4 million. So it's expected to go down about half, about half a million, and that total outstanding debt at the end, by, by the end of this fiscal year. Any other questions from the council? And the immediate projected savings for this for this, this year would be just good. under thirty thousand dollars for this fiscal year, and seventy-seven thousand dollars for next fiscal year. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the public on refinancing some of our bonds? Yes, I'll, I'll go right here in the front. Mr. Verona. First, I want to say I'm happy the city is looking to save money and take proactive, solid steps to refinance their debt and to look at, uh, at saving money. But I think that with uh, and I want to ask a question in this show. What is our fund balance for the general fund, for the water fund, and the sewer fund, and what is our current net position? And, you know, these, I don't think from your audit statements, from your uh, interim statements, that our, our financial state is not looking good, as I've said several times. So I think that, uh, yes, we could find, just because the way interest rates are looking right now, we could have find savings, but, I'm just worried about whether we're keeping our hopes up too high and whether because our financial state is so bad that no one would really be willing to lend us this money. And uh, also I'm wondering if the council will just keep uh, us who attend city council meetings in the loop and inform whether the state will approve uh, like what their determination is, whether they approve just keeping residents in the loop about what is uh, what's, what the status of fund is. So thank you if you can answer my question. So um, yes, we will keep, uh, when, when this closes, and we know what we're gonna save, um, I'm sure we'll post it, and I'm sure we'll you know, get it out as, as, as best as we can. In terms of answering those other questions, I'm not sure if uh, it's on topic, and I'm not sure if Christy can answer those questions right now, so. Well, it relates to our financial state, and it relates to whether- I know, but it, but it doesn't directly relate to the bond. She's, Christy Hightower's here tonight, specifically with uh, the information for the bond. Well, if the bond doesn't go through, then there's no point for this resolution. We have to be, it, it relates to our uh, expectations, I would say. I appreciate it. Thank you, Eddie. I saw another hand. Yes. Good evening. State your uh, name and address for the record. Hey, my name is Justin Malkin. I live in Bermuda uh, Street. <laughs> I used to work in um, Wall Street, where I worked in fixed income. Um, so that's not only arrogant, but I think concerns are a bit of uh, bit knowledgeable on fixed income. And I know that there's no such thing as free lunch. I don't look at this in detail, but um, uh, you know all the sales tactics to engineer a useless trade. So um, I mean, if the maturity is the same and the coupon is the same, and the price is the same, right? But like, you're probably getting taken out. What the yield is a grain equalizer. What is your takeout yield, and what are you? What is your purchase yield? And are you picking up yield? If you're not picking up yield, you're not really saving anything. And it may make sense to extend out your maturities uh, to this environment because if I'm wrong, so the duration is the same. But if you want it for a short duration, you're going to have to refinance at probably higher rates. So there is a reason why you might want to just stay put and you lock in. And yes, maybe you'll pay a little bit more on a semi annual basis, but it may be a huge bit. I don't like that. So when it comes to municipal refunding bonds, um, New York State law does not allow you to go out past the original maturity of the bond that you're refunding. So there's no way to extend the city's maturity to save money. Um, and in the end, as far as the inner workings of it, uh, I'm not definitely not going to dispute that. But in the end, if it does semi-annually or annually save the city anywhere from you know, 70 to 75 thousand dollars a year with no out-of-pocket costs, no extension of maturity, 
And then you can just you know, name the search, just make sense of the city to say that kind of money. Anyone else? How about comments? About refinancing? Yes? Name and address for the record, sir? definitely not familiar with the term breakage, but this is not a loan. This is bonds that are outstanding. So when a municipality goes out for debt, they sell bonds to the public. And the public, by, by right, has a right to hold those bonds until maturity. It's not like a bank that you just go to and say, we want to renegotiate, we want you to give us back our debt, we want to issue new debt. No, our bondholders have a right to hold that bond until call date or maturity. Usually, bonds are called within the last five years. So what, what municipalities have to do is you have to issue new bonds to then put the proceeds with the premium of those new bonds into an irrevocable trust that's usually funded by Treasury Securities. And then those funds are then used to pay all the old bondholders. And then the new bondholders are the ones that the city is now beholden to. And that becomes the city's new debt. So it's not like we're just renegotiating in terms of the loan. Um, the way it works is all upfront costs, underwriter costs, bond council costs, fiscal advisor costs, they're all rolled into the bond. And they are on the first page of the analysis all broken down there as far as our estimates go. As far as the cash flow, it is immediate savings. Like we just said before, we'll save just under $30,000 in this fiscal year and in June 30th. Next fiscal year, we're estimated to save about 77. And then about that, anywhere from 62 to 84 going forward a year. So it, in the end, it comes out to a little over $800,000 of this projection. At the same time, the city is set the schedule to competitively sell these bonds the last week in February. Should that sale not go not go favorably, then the city just will not issue the bond and will not close on the sale. Because it cannot it cannot do this, it's not going to save at least three percent from the value. Thank you, Mr. Corbin. <coughs>
it was one of the supervisors, personal credit cards that they were using, and that's bad governance all around. So by entering into this agreement, they will be afforded the discount that we get, one, in the bulk amount of gas we buy, and two, in having no taxes, and three, it would be a better accounting procedure. So this is a, a, a perfect example of the intermunicipal agreements, communities or governments working together to ultimately save taxpayers' money. And th this is how we did it before Superstorm Sandy, correct? That is correct. Any questions from the council? Yeah, how, how do we keep track of how much gas that they uh, <coughs> As part of the contractual agreement that we entered into, they must present themselves at the main office in the city garage where we an attendant will go up and, and a city mortgage employee will report the gas that's consumed. I just wanted to uh, ask a question for clarification. In the past, we did something similarly with the school district. We had to enter into this because the Long Beach Housing Authority is a separate legal entity. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's not just in the past that we did it with the school district. That that agreement is still current. We, we, we do uh, buy fuel to the school district. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Questions or comments from the public? Mrs. Blanchett. This is a separate entity, so no. Right, it's a separate entity, so you should really 
be scrutinizing this aroma. Not that, I mean, Councilman Aromo. I'm sorry, Councilman Aromo. Um, City Council President Aromo. But the fact that, I know, but he also was talking during my time. But the fact that the people on that committee so have the say? cars are part of your what political party. Your are time, you? Your time is up, we'll answer some of your questions now, okay? Okay, go ahead. No, you can, you can take a seat. I will answer your questions because this isn't going to be a back and forth. Your time is up. Oh, I, will okay. answer, I will answer your questions. Thank you. Uh, with respect to uh, other entities that I know that we may share fuel with, I uh, may reimburse for the cost. I know that we have an intermunicipal agreement with the school district. I'm not aware of any other intermunicipal agreements where we share fuel. I don't think there are. As far as the other questions, uh, will we save if we buy more in bulk, most likely? Uh, why didn't we continue the practice after Sandy? I'm, I'm not sure why we didn't do that. Uh, as far as why uh, Acting City Manager Tagney put this item on the agenda, uh, Acting City Manager Tagney will be Acting City Manager until 8.59 a.m. tomorrow, so until that time, he has all the powers of the City Manager. Uh, as far as previous oversight of fuel rules, my understanding previously, uh, we had that barco system, uh, system that Councilman Mandel had. Um, and as far as the vehicles uh, that they're going to be using, I think Commissioner Tagney answered that question. They're going to have four designated vehicles to build the fuel on their uh, station. And that's all. And I, I will ask issue is um, the actual contract between the Housing Authority and the City of Home was drawn up by uh, incoming Acting City Manager Acting DC. So he's intimately familiar with this. And this has been going back about four months, just back and forth on this issue. So it's not a last minute thing. I would just like to add that saving money uh, for the Housing Authority just will benefit the residents that live there. Anything else? Any other questions or comments from the public? No. Nope. Seeing no hands, next item. I agree. The resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for a sanitary sewer replacement on Riverside Boulevard between East Bowling and East Pine Streets with the most responsible bidder. We had a sewer collapse uh, on uh, Fulton, on uh, Riverside Boulevard between Fulton and Pine. We tried to take some very innovative uh, measures to, to line the sewer, and it just was such a severe collapse that it didn't it didn't work out. So we had to go with complete um, restoration. Uh, we went out to bid. We received four bids. The lowest being Thomas Cavelli Contracting for 187,005. The highest bid from Bank of Corp Construction at 436,700. So, uh, and there is money available in the to upgrade city-wide to fund this. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? You know, this item, Commissioner Miranda, uh, from the council, anyone in the public? Sure, Mr. Lester. Name and address for the record. <coughs> Thank you. Please speak to what we tried to do 
what actually failed. Sure. And then the difference in. Well, I know what you're trying to do. I'm just curious. Well, then, about then you answer the question. Well, okay. You answer the question. I'll tell you what you tried to do. No, why don't we let the deputy no, commissioner no, answer the question? Because you just told me to answer the question. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll get the information from the expert. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, listen, I'm trying to make patient with this, but you know, we tried to do something out there. First of all, our record plans indicated that that was a 10 inch main. Uh, when we looked at it, what we could see into the main, we thought we had a chance to do a, a cured in place line. And I've kept everybody on this council up to date on this. 100%. Uh, when we started going in, we brought the uh, company in New York Water Main to do it. Uh, we got it about 10 feet and we couldn't get it any further. We brought it and we did a repair. Uh, and we were able to get in about another 40 feet. When we got in, we found that the pipe was mostly an inch, but then we ran into a very bad uh, a collapse. Uh, we decided that it didn't make sense. We'd have to keep doing these individual repairs and probably run up the bill a lot more. So it turned out this was not a pipe to be, uh, to be a pure in place. So we decided to put together a bid for a, uh, you know, a normal trench, open trench cut, put a new pipe in, and we also made a decision that we should put 10 inch pipe in because it's at the end of, 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 of the flow. It really should be a 10 inch pipe. Uh, there's also a 48 inch drain in there. So we moved the main to the left of that drain or to the, uh, I would say to the west of the, of the drain so that uh, we would be able to avoid any interference with the, with the drain. We we're very fortunate that we had a contractor working on the Pacific who does sewer work and we, that's how we were able to get such a low bid at 187,000. Uh, if we have another main like this, I certainly would invest the time to try to see if we could do a cure in place because we certainly would have saved a lot of money. We actually spent uh, $4,900 in terms of trying to TV and clean the line. It just became impossible and the decision had to be made that this was just not a candidate for that type of replacement. I apologize that I get upset, but you know, I've been doing this for 40 years and when I have somebody constantly, no matter what we do, questioning everything, and I don't mind the questions. I don't mind the questions, but they're done in an obnoxious way. And I'm sorry. I don't need to take that. Okay. Before you leave, does anyone on the council have any other questions for the commissioner? No. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Commissioner. So the answer is very simple. Is they thought it was a ten inch. It was only an eight inch. The paperwork said it was a ten inch. Correct. That's all I asked. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Nope. Seeing no hands, next item. Item 4 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to extend the current agreement to the town of Mexico Department of Sanitation Stock Program. This is a, a, a very environmentally uh, positive program. We take uh, the stop dams to stop throwing out pollutants. We take all these dangerous substances. We collect them in a responsible manner. Uh, working with the town of Amsterdam, they do eight of these across the town during the year. We're fortunate enough to have one right here in our own backyard that no cost for us, and, uh, and we can get these uh, toxic substances off the barrier island in a responsible manner. Please, Council, we're not going to this. Sure, please. I think this is a great, this is a great opportunity for two municipal governments to work together to discard these um, these items. There's a specific list. The lists are generally included in the calendar. There's also uh, emails and notices that go out annually regarding this program. Uh, I had the opportunity to stop by uh, at some of the prior programs. A number of residents, there's usually a line that goes through behind City Hall, uh, and residents have an opportunity to get rid of these of these items. So this is a this is a great chance, and I would encourage our residents to do so, given that so many people are, are undertaking uh, renovation projects and, and don't have a way to dispose of these products. So it's a, a great chance for people to come uh, and do that annually. So I would encourage them to do so. Okay. Any questions from the council? Stop yeah. program? Um, yes. Looking at the stop program calendar, there's one collection in Long Beach in 2019 April 7th. Um, for the remainder of the year, does the stock take material picked up by our sanitation department or does solely material people drop off voluntarily? Uh, two, two points on that. One is it has to be, we, we cannot collect these, these materials by 
uh, regulation. But Long Beach residents are welcome at all eight stop programs. So if you were to miss the April one, you could go to any of the other seven. So they come up to Balmore or East Meadow. Exactly. Okay. We, do, we do accept paint uh, that we store uh, until the subsequent stop. So anyone that brings in paint in July or September will be hold until April when we will deliver to the stop program. <coughs> Anyone else from the council? Anyone from the public? Mr. Dubow, welcome back. Haven't been anywhere, just haven't been down here. Not on one side. It's good to be back. Mr. Dubow, out of Long Beach. Thank you. The stop program is great. Um, like John said, if you visit Long Beach, you enjoy the place. You can also have the place by the rec. I think we still have that stop program of electronics. Yes, the. Uh, Which is also a great thing to do. My question is, now they have to also does a, a shredding of documents program, um, which we don't have. I think that'd be a great thing to have too, because people always have documents that need to be shredded. Could you look into that about having that? I was kind of interested doing that here too. Not necessarily the same day, you know, right, right. they do it different days or whatever. That's a great suggestion, thank you. Is, is there any reason why we haven't done that in the past? So the first time hearing of it. Oh, okay. Good, okay. I'm looking forward to sharing some documents. <laughs> I'm sure the council has some documents they want to share too. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dubow. Yes, I see you in the session. Name and address for the record. First aid is Vulcan Meebeck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I, I have yet to been here in many, many months. I'm Lee Hesh in Long Beach. Um, I just wanted to say I'm a volunteer for AARP, and twice a year we have a shredding event. Oh. It's advertised in the library, and I hang up posters and, you know, advertise a bit. I'll let you know next time we have one set up, okay? We'll definitely use the resources of the city to promote it. Thank you so much. It's usually at the Long Beach High School. Um, uh, Part one. Part one. Thank you. Anyone else about the stop for Yes, Ms. Lynchette.
you know, maybe consider that moving forward if we could get this access to these questions, because you're not going to answer my email, I know that. <laughs> Am I making any sense? No, we have mostly like answers to those questions, I believe. Okay, but and some of these questions are kind of appropriate questions to ask on the city's social media, like whether it's Facebook, Twitter, I think you have Instagram, um, and I believe we have Instagram. Right. Aren't you a millennial? Oh, terrible. So maybe if someone that asks you, okay. we'll talk about that later. But perhaps. If this council could direct someone like Ryan or whoever does social media to answer questions like that, because I have seen residents okay. asking questions. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so in terms of uh, promoting our recycling, um, I know Ryan does an excellent job, especially uh, in uh, during around Earth Day in April. We do a lot of recycling updates in October. I know we do a lot of it too. Uh, World Recycling Day, I forget when that is. It's sometime at the end of the year. Um, and Ryan would be the person to talk to about the Environmental Review Board. Um, all right. Is that right? BRB? Advisory. Advisory. Environmental Advisory. Environmental Advisory. Um, do you have some answers about the uh, penalized? Do we penalize? What happens to, would you like to speak to that, Commissioner, in terms of sanitation? Uh, what happens to uh, these chemicals that are just left on the curb? Thank you. Just, just a couple things first. Uh, we do send out a notice every year for the stop program. And on that notice, it does list uh, not only what you can and can't drop off, but it lists the dates and the locations of the other all the other nine that take place in the town. And said everybody's welcome to go to all of those. In addition, the last page in the calendar that was sent out to everybody has a quick guideline for recycling, bulk pickup, and any other sanitation regulations. Uh, I know one of the questions Allison had. And I, I apologize, I thought her email said not to respond to her, but uh, if I don't, I would, I would have copied her on the response that I sent. Um, Something sassy. No, I'm not being sassy. I'm just explaining why you didn't get a response from me. Um, so uh, the um, we do we try to warn people. If we catch something in the, the, the waste flow that doesn't belong, they will knock on the door, let one of the supervisors go in there and speak to them. As you mentioned before, we do take paint cans and we do accumulate them and, and do them. Uh, we would be notified if it's in the waste stream and we don't see it, because we're picking up bags of garbage, there can be some hazardous waste that gets mixed in. Right. We would be notified by the town of Hempstead if they find anything that's that they feel is detrimental to their process. <coughs> uh, in the two years I've been here, uh, you know, I can't speak for the past, but we've never been notified of the town of Hempstead to reject the load. We've had some recycling loads rejected where there's been you know, MSW in it, but never a, a hazardous waste rejection of any goals to the town of Hempstead. So I think our guys do a pretty good job of separating it. Uh, there are penalties in this thing for not following the guidelines. You can, you know, the first offense can be uh, anywhere from $100 to $500 fine and seven days in prison. I'm pretty sure we're not going to send anybody to prison for it. Uh, and uh, second offense can be $500 to 1000 uh, I believe, and 10 days in prison, or a combination of both, and third offense can go up as high as $2,500 and uh, a longer length of sentence in prison. So I mean, the, the, the penalties are pretty severe. I mean, we try to work with our residents. I, I don't think we're looking to find people, we're just looking to educate them on what they can and can't put in. Uh, I think we need to be prepared. Right now we do single stream recycling, where on Wednesday everybody can put their papers, cans, bottles, and what have you. Uh, in one single stream and get separated resource. Uh, we are going to be meeting with the DEC very shortly. We've just filed our new solid waste plan that is required. There are going to be some upcoming regulation changes in recycling, and we may be having to go back to, to uh, separating different recyclables, uh, which uh, we're working on some various uh, options to do that. Um, so uh, stay tuned. We have a meeting, I think, on February 23rd with the DEC to, to review the new rules. And this has a lot to do with glass not being acceptable anymore right. and limiting what type of cardboards and papers can go. So, uh, can you speak to the stock program residents versus commercial? Oh, right. And that was the other question. Yes. Uh, commercial businesses are not allowed to use the stock program. They must get private cards to take away any hazardous materials that they have that they use. Okay. Thank you. Anyone have any other questions for the commissioner? 
Anyone else? Uh, any residents about the stock program? Sure. Name and address for the record? Uh, Bill Tanzi, West End. Um, just a quick question here. Do we get paid when they pick up the electronic uh, uh, trash that we throw away? All the chunks per se. That, that's your only question? Well, I mean, yeah, the reason I asked for it is the cottage industry, I don't know if you're aware of it. The cottage industry uh, harvests the gold from the surface. And I, it sounds that way. However, uh, Wall Street uh, was looking to make, you know, full of so that they could do that. And what they found was for every hundred tons of electronic uh, waste, you could uh, harvest the same amount of gold as if you had a hundred tons of gravel. And that's because it's electronic waste. We just have to melt it off the wire that's on. So I just wonder if, uh, because I don't know, if, if we just dump it to Hempstead, I think they actually sell it. I just wonder if we got a chance to make a couple of dollars. I don't expand, Mr. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm going to ask. John? Commissioner Miranda, do we do we sell our electronic recycling, or is it just picked up and, and recycled responsibly? You know, I'm not familiar with that contract, uh, but you know, generally it's it's about two or three cents a pound. It goes to AHRC and Freeport. Uh, and AHRC dismantles it. There's a lot of waste, you know, plastic products and stuff like that. Yep. So, uh, you know, in previous contracts that I've seen with other municipalities, it's only, like I say, about two cents a pound, so it's not very, uh, it's, it's, more, it's more just to make sure it stays out of the waste from out of the waste stream. Uh, and so it's not a big I, I don't oversee that contract, so I can't really comment on whether we get the same amount, but that's the typical rate that okay. I pay. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just state your name and address for the record. Related to the stop program. Book. My name is Sarah Messi. Long Beach News. You guys had a red box so that people would stop flushing the pills. So since we're talking about environment, do we still have the red box? Yes. I just want to remind all the residents, please use the red box when you use the station because it goes right into the water. We take all, all medical waste, uh, whether it's meals or again, all the shops in the industry, um, prescription medication, illegal uh, narcotics, you can drop in there. If you want to find something in your, your child's room, you can bring it right in without being questioned and drop it in the box. Completely anonymous, drop it in. Completely anonymous. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Ms. Delbert, take your time.
So but they're using a, they're using the public trash bin is what I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying. It's like the trash bin is overwhelming. We put a whole thing up, yeah. Yes. We do okay. So they should be calling for personal. Well, but it's still the city workforce that's coming and doing exactly. the whole pickup. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that too is information is on the calendar as well, right? On the back of the calendar. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else about the stop program? Yes. Ms. Fiore. Name and address for the record. Ina Fiore, Long Beach. I just, uh, again, one thing we always talk about when we come up here is our communication. There were comments that came up tonight. The electronic recycling is like a, a, a St. Vincent de Paul box on the side of the wreck between the pool and the back of the pool and the ice skating rink. One thing, sharps, whether it's sharps, whether it's paint cans, whether it's bulk recycling, thank you, John. I know my form of the bulk trying to recycling. It's obvious we have a communication of, or a, 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 a misstep in communication. I think it would be smarter to promote the stop program along with whatever other FAQ sheet I put together ASAP to get all of this information out as soon as possible. We've got more than that, we've got a website, we've got Facebook, and we've got people who would probably be happy to share the information. The only point is, again, there's a communication missing here. I think we, I think we consistently put out the recycling uh, information um, on our Facebook page. Not uh, everyone's when on coming Facebook. In, so we've talked about this before. Um, we post it on the website. We put it on the Facebook page. Uh, sometimes stuff goes on Twitter. Uh, mailing stuff to homes is expensive. So we do put all the information on the calendar because that does get mailed out to everyone. Um, and then if anyone is free to call any department at any time with any questions, uh, your questions will be answered. And then of course we do have the app. So there's a plethora of communication uh, out there uh, that we utilize. The website's but, but not ADA question. compliant. But the, but can, we can always have more communication, more communication. And also, I'd just like to add that to keep your eyes peeled, the website has been uh, worked on for quite a while now, and it's going to be revamped uh, very, very soon. Uh, it will be a completely new website. So, any other questions or comments related to the stop program? And five is resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase various chemicals on an as needed basis for the water purification plant and the most responsive bidders. Uh, for the aluminum tokens, we had three bids uh, below of $1.0773 per gallon. Uh, the highest price was $1.2224 per gallon. Uh, we went with chem trade chemicals. For the hydrate line bulb, we got two bids. One for $205 a ton versus $207.69 a ton. So we are recommending we go for $205. And these are chemicals for our water treatment plant. Just to be clear, Commissioner, these are mandated chemicals that we're required to use? Correct. Correct. Any questions about these two specific chemicals in this purchase? Anything from the council? Just one question. Are these prices on par with what we're paying now? The hydrated line bulk is exactly the same price as it was in 2015, and the um, trade has gone up uh, significantly this year from 88, 83 last year to 1.0773 this year. Okay, any other questions from the council? Any questions for the public related to these two chemicals? Is it treat on water? No, seeing no hands. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I can't see you. Ms. Blanchett. Allison Blanchett. I'm curious how much money is spent on these chemicals on average per year, just a curiosity. The sulfate liquid, about $51,710.40, and on the hydrated line, $36,900. Thank you. Um, is this something that we can look at purchasing, doing some kind of like cooperative or 
procurement thing like you do with the housing uh, housing authority with fuel. It's my understanding that our water treatment center is going to be going over to Nassau County at some point. If not, we're not doing any of that. Sewer, you have to the sewer, sewer consolidation. That is what I'm thinking of. What do I do? Um, but again, to that procurement, like the water district thing, is there a way of looking to another place to see if we can purchase stuff from them versus paying these costs? Is that a thing? Is that? You don't know if you can get it cheaper by partnering? With another municipality. I don't know any other municipality that we can partner with. Right? We, there are a number of water districts. The number of what? There are a number of water districts. I don't know if they'd be willing to partner. I've never explored it. I've never explored it. Huh. Maybe you should table this and explore it. Or have the next acting city manager explore it. My understanding is that we need these chemicals right now so that we okay. can get water. So no matter what, we need to do something right now. Okay. For water Thank you, Greg. Sure. Thank you, We're in a little different situation than most water supplies. Um, most of the water supplies, we use a hydrated line to raise the pH of water. The pH of the water that comes up out of the wells is acidic, so it's at a low pH, and we raise the pH to make it non corrosive. Most other water suppliers use caustic soda. Uh, we use hydrated lime. Uh, the other thing is most water suppliers don't have the amount of concentrated iron that exists in the deep aquifers that we take the water from this naturally occurring iron. We use the aluminum sulfate to coagulate that iron so that we can settle it out. There's really no other water suppliers on the island that use that chemical, so uh, they have different processes than we have. So it's, it's a little difficult to do things in bulk. And basically, there's usually only three or four different chemical suppliers between New Jersey and New York that can actually deliver the chemicals. So, we'll, the water supplies get together, we'll pay them pretty close to the same prices on, on different chemicals. So, and can you just remind me again, how many years have you been dealing with municipal water? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, 40 years. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Any other questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. Yep. <clears throat>
December 31st, 2018. We are, which is exactly halfway through our budget. Um, we are at below 50% of the budget, so we're pretty much right on target. Uh, we were accused of violating uh, Sunshine Laws and after consultating, after consultation with uh, a few of our attorneys, I would say, um, that is false. Uh, we have been in compliance and that is according to uh, a lawsuit that was the city was a part of many years ago. I don't know. Uh, uh, that was before my time. We were kind of aware of it. It was a federal lawsuit. I believe it was in the mid-2000s. Okay, so there was a lawsuit. Um, and also in consultation with the State Committee on Home Governance. Um, and then there were some questions about our garage. Um, so the uh, garage door was broken, that was true, it's fixed. Um, it did take a little while because we do have to follow uh, purchasing our requirements and that causes a delay. Um, uh, the cameras are not ripped down, they are functioning and up. Um, they were down for some time in 2015. Fifteen. Let's see if I can follow along here. A lot of questions. Let's see. Uh, blown engines on the truck. No maintenance on the truck. Sanitation trucks destroyed. Vehicles sent to private vendors to get fixed. Bed bugs. Um, so the, some of the sanitation trucks are in fact old, and they do require a little more attention and maintenance, so they do get fixed as needed. Uh, Commissioner Miranda, I know, does have a plan to uh, get us some new vehicles for our, our sanitation department, but no sanitation pickup has been affected due to the trouble with some of the trucks, uh, which is normal wear and tear, especially for a garbage truck, especially in an ocean environment. Uh, we do, in fact, use private vendors sometimes on our cars. Uh, typical body work um, will get outsourced. Uh, that's very common. Uh, the garage has never had bed bugs. They did have uh, some fleas due to a, an abandoned house right next to the garage that had been taken care of by exterminators, uh, which is, you know, what, how you get rid of fleas. Um, there was a, a, a book someone brought in that had retired to help with the administration. Um, he since left for medical issues, so he was only there for a short time. Buses breaking down, not passing safety standards. The city's buses are in and out uh, for routine maintenance constantly. Uh, they are used a lot, um, but no bus route has been missed due to uh, regular maintenance or maintenance due to repairs. Um, we have not failed a single safety inspection. I know we've been accused of that quite a few times, but I'm told and we are told from our, uh, from our, uh, um, our garage that we have not failed a single safety inspection. Um, as far as fare boxes go, our DOT staff has obtained the federal grant to pay for fare boxes, and that's in the works right now. Um, there's a lot of different types of systems, and they're looking into what's the best system for our specific needs. Um, and then there was an accusation made about payroll theft. Um, that is not true. There's, there's no proof or, or, or any, any other, uh, anyone else referring to any sort of payroll theft that occurred. Um, and then someone had asked about Miss uh, Catherine Perone, the unfortunate passing of her. Um, and we did in fact work with our communications department, did work with Newsday. I don't know if you saw the nice spread um, that they did uh, for Mrs. Perone uh, uh, and her service to the city. Um, and then about city-owned vehicles, um, they, there are records. We do know who has all the cars um, and what department uh, uses each vehicle uh, for take-home vehicles. So I think that's all I have in terms of unanswered questions at this time. So I'll go to regular good welfare. Okay. Eddie Verona. <coughs> Eddie Verona. Um, I have several questions for the council tonight. First, about the ethics board. Our federal single audit pointed out that we don't have a functioning ethics board, but I think city manager Tagney told me several minutes ago he was in the process of appointing new members. Is there an update on the ethics board, and when will it be functioning? Uh, next, I was comparing the uh, this is the comptroller's uh, models model code of ethics for local governments. Council and I actually have. I actually have our ethics code as well. My apologies. My apologies as well as this. Um, 
the model code of ethics for uh, local governments and our current ethics code. And the model code includes a ban on nepotism and compelled political donations, such as a supervisor forcing a subordinate to make a political donation. Why are these provisions not included in the Code of Ethics, and will the Council commit to making these necessary ethical changes? Uh, next, as budget season begins, I was wondering if the City has considered rebidding its workers' comp insurance, addressing structural overtime problems, and restructuring the way we pay unemployment as potential budget savings. And finally, I want to say I've personally spoken to the Committee on Open Government about our caucus and meeting meetings policies, and that they have told me that caucuses, especially when there's five members of a council that share the same political party, that caucuses can only be about political business and political party business, not about any matters of personnel, not about any matters of running the city. So if, uh, if, there's, if there's a confusion, which I think there is, that I think the council should submit, should tell the community of the government about their policies and ask for an advisory opinion. So could uh, any of these questions about ethics, about uh, budget savings be answered tonight or will it be at the next meeting? Well, I would just say that we'll definitely go over these uh, ethics uh, model. Where did you get them from? Uh, the, on the Comptroller's website, it had a model code of ethics. Okay. okay. Um, I did, um, we'll definitely discuss it. Uh, Commissioner, Acting City Manager tagging about the ethics board, any update on that? Or? Yes, I suspended my involvement with it in anticipation of this FSDC taking off. And do you have any estimated date of when the ethics board can become functioning and have a quorum? That's a question for the FSDC. All right, I will be asking that in the next, or I, I guess that that be added to your list of uh, things to bring up at the next meeting. And uh, also, like I stated, the, those budget savings, hopefully that can be included as we are entering in budget season. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brendan Healy. Good evening, Brendan Healy, West End, Long Beach. I'm going to just provide an update uh, for the council and the community on uh, new and renewal liquor licenses uh, within the West End of Long Beach. Um, this is a background to date. Our committee, which is the Committee on Quality of Life and Standards and Public West End Neighbors, has worked with six applicants and ultimately provided letters of support from the community following agreed upon stipulations that have been adopted by the SLA. Those are things such as soundproofing, hours, you know, methods of operation, etc. Those bars that we've worked with closely are Minnesota's, Castaway, Port Choices, also known as Beach House, Island Time, Baked by the Ocean, and Blacksmith Breads. Our support is contingent upon all applicants complying with the city code including the building and noise variances. Uh, we've been working very closely with the owners of Minnesota. They're doing a soundproofing update, uh, I think in the next few months, on the wall and on the ceiling. They've been good partners with us on that. Uh, we're actually encouraging Lily's as well to, to look at soundproofing. They've had some issues in the past few months. Uh, from a new application perspective, uh, there's a new application for Bungalow West. This is a 500 foot case for an on-premise liquor license. So that means that there are more than three establishments within 500 feet. And for, sorry, let's check something here. Um, basically what that means is this is a new location, not licensed before, and it's up to the SLA to meet with the community to determine whether that license is in the public interest. We are soliciting feedback from the community. We'll be providing that feedback to the SLA. Our email address for any feedback is West and residents at hotmail.com. Uh, they've completed our questionnaire. We are meeting with them over this weekend and I'm looking forward to having a dialogue with them on what their intentions are. From a renewal perspective, Neo Posto is up for renewal this month. Uh, we haven't received any complaints either way on Neo Posto. And there are six bars up for renewal in 2019. Uh, I know we're meeting uh, with the current acting city manager, Tagney, as well as hopefully acting city manager, I guess DC this, this week to talk about the Public Safety Commission. And I just want to thank Dave and the City Clerk for all the efforts they do to make sure we get our notifications. Any questions regarding liquor licenses or quality of life in the West End? 
Is Buffalo West Palm for a full liquor license or just beer wine? No, full liquor license. So that's a full on premise. Um, in contrast, Take by the Ocean, as well as Island of Time, um, and uh, including the license trends all did uh, beer wine sites. Those are not 500 foot cases, but being that the other applicant is going for a full on permit, that is 500 foot cases. Okay. I just need to thank you for your work uh, with the Western Neighbors. Um, we really do appreciate it. And, and thank you for uh, for echoing our concerns and working with the residents as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lou Dubow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. I have a question about something I read in the newspaper last week. I was a little disturbed by it. <clears throat> the article stated that four of the five council members had a meeting about hiring Rob as temporary city council uh, <coughs> city manager. And John was left out of the meeting, didn't know anything about the meeting. Um, I don't know if this is true, if it's not true. Is it what's going on with that? It, it wasn't a meeting. The statement wasn't specific to knowing about when the special meeting was going to be called. My understanding from the article is that you knew John was against it, but the four of you met anyway. No, the it. four of us never met. The four of us never met. We yeah. met in groups and different ones, but that that particular statement was about uh, John had asked about um, knowing about when the count, knowing that the special meeting was going to be called, and I was saying all the other four members of the council knew that it was going to be on the third. But it seemed from the article that John was left out of, out of this. It may, could be, you know, the way things are written in the newspaper. I don't, I don't know. John, do you have a comment on that? Or you care to comment about that? There was, uh, at least in my direction, there was probably less communication than I would have liked. I feel that you all represent the community. I think especially something like that that's important as the city manager because obviously from, from again from the article, I don't know if it's true, that this consideration of making Rob permanent city manager could be better different, I'm not saying. I just think it's something that everybody should be involved in that discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Something that you said that 
really got me boiling. And it was that you weren't, you just didn't think it didn't sit well with you that he could potentially be let go after putting in his time. And I feel as though there is, you're always under, no matter what job you are in, you are always being looked at under the microscope. And I do believe you can do a good job for us as long as he knows <coughs> that he has to feel the fear and confront and do right by us because we are in a really bad fiscal situation and he cannot, you know, walk on, you know, the water. He needs to make sure that he does the right job. And the other thing I want to just say, Commissioner Tagney, I really appreciate what you've done. You've done two jobs. And I want you to know that I just recently met a police chief and I told him what you've been what you did and he called you a hero. So I brought you this personal note. I want to give this to you. Mr. Frazier, if you don't mind giving this to him. And I just want to say personally thank you. Thank you. So I think um, what what I was speaking about was hiring a search firm immediately as we're hiring him to be acting city manager, which I think is a poor idea. Um, we did discuss, and I'm in favor of reviewing his performance after Labor Day, get through the budget, get through the summer, and then review his performance then, um, which I think is a fair amount of time to be able to, but to do something effective immediately, um, to me seems like undercutting him right before you you know, starts taking the job. So I think that's what, okay. I think that might be good. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. J. Gosselin. Uh, 
may have nothing to do with the previous uh, press release that you're referring to. Um, and the website, I believe, was it in house or what? Yeah. Yes. The website uh, you can from Long Beach Event is what we're trying to do most of it in house. So most of it is being done in the post. Yeah, the only they've been working very diligently on it. We do have some, uh, a company that, that is helping us with the platform itself. So most of this is done in-house by uh, very enjoying the internet. Okay. So do we have a name for the PR firm? Not Shapiro Associates. Okay, and you just stated that the firm was retained a month or so ago, so that my question would be, um, is there a reason why the council was not notified that, that this PR firm has been retained? No, the, it was communicated to me that um, they wanted to, members of the council wanted to kind of audition this firm uh, on a month to month basis to see whether or not it was uh, viable to go with it. So he's being auditioned. It's also my understanding that the reason it didn't come before the council was because it was such a short period of time and below the threshold that it didn't come, if we were to consider going forward with it with my understanding that we would bring it before the council but that this was just an initial opportunity for us to see if it was helpful in reaching our residents and getting some of the messaging out there's okay. also no procurement required for professional services and i believe that uh, public relations public relations would fall into that so er earlier we were talking about communications and this is another way to try and communicate with the public and trying to figure out if this would work for us because our communications department is understaffed. And it, and it is also my understanding that every single council member uh, met with Mr. Shapiro. Okay, but that's not the question. The question is we retained some form of contract with him. Uh, Councilwoman Diamond just stated this is below the threshold. That was my entire point. When we met last week in terms of the uh, government HR search firm being retained. It's the same issue. So why are we, for whatever reason, changing the rules for this situation? So that's my question. Well, I think it was because it's significantly less money as opposed to the right. thirty four hundred twenty thousand dollars correct? So I, what? I don't see that one is the same. I don't know that we discussed, I, I don't understand your question, but I know that this was significantly less and we were only doing it for a brief period of time to see if the members of the council who the individual had reached out to, each of us, uh, were satisfied with the work and wanted to continue that type of service. So until we made that decision, obviously if we decide that we want to go forward with it, then it's something that does need to come before the council because it would be for a longer and more significant period of time. To the extent that the search firm is, is not exactly the same because it, it would, it's a set amount of money for a specific service, and I believe I said that it, I don't have any issues with it coming before the council, I, I expressed that to you from the beginning. So let's go back, so let's go back to retaining this PR firm. Let's still start with the main question. Now we're saying that this was an audition, but it goes back to the idea that at least for myself, I was never informed that this individual, that he was auditioning to be in this particular position. I have no it's an audition, it's a contract. It's to do a contract with them, it's not right. for them to be on staff in the city. It's not the same right. thing. Right, but it's still a contract, right? And you just yeah. said that for whatever reason, this did not come before us as a resolution because it fell below the threshold, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. my understanding as well. Exactly, so again, I'm being told tonight that we retained them for a month or two. So the question is, why were we not notified? Some of us were not notified that this decision had taken place. That's my only question. It was my understanding, my understanding that the decision had taken place back in November or December, and I was my understanding as well that everybody was, it was discussed with everybody, as did Mr. Shapiro reach out to everybody. Okay, but to how did that Wait, wait a second, to the extent that that's not the case, I, I can't speak to that, I'm not. I'm not so you seem to have a lot of understanding, because the issue is, you just said that- Because I asked a lot of questions. I have a lot of understanding, because I asked a lot of questions. Mr. Shapiro and I, and you, re 
reach out and all spoke with Mr. Shapiro as well. Okay, so those are two different things. So let's stick to the topic. Know. The topic is, you're saying now, this happened in November or December that he was retained. So if he was retained, why did an official communication go out to all of us with respect to him being retained? That's still the question on the floor. Well, that I can't sit here. No, okay, I'm thank you. To do that. But it is my understanding that we were all, that Mr. Yeah. Shapiro reached out to all of us and met with everybody to discuss some of our concerns. No. The, the issue of notifying the council, I guess that would fall on me. Being that I knew the council all had had conversations with him, I thought you were all aware that we had the case. I mean, I'll just speak for myself. I was asked, he called me and asked me to meet him for breakfast, which I did. At the end of the meeting, I never heard his name mentioned again until I found out that we had retained him. When did you find out that he was retained? A couple of weeks ago, I guess, when it came up before the council meeting, I believe. Okay, Mr. Roy Lester.
So I, I said that it was mandated. I might, I might be mistaken. Maybe it's just something we have to use. I, I, I know I'm the one that used that phrase, and I'm not the man that has been in water for 40 years. Um, and I think the commissioner's frustration was with the accusatory tone, not that he didn't know what he was doing or talking about, um, not that he didn't want to answer questions. As you know, he's more than happy to answer any questions and try and dumb it down as much as possible so we can all uh, understand what he's actually talking about. You'd like to speak, sir? Please do. What, what the mandate is that we are allowed a certain level of line in water. Okay. That iron that comes up out of a well spas exceeds that, that level. So what we do is we use lubricant sulfate to help take it out of the water. So that's all. And it has to be an NSF approved chemical. So the chemical itself is not mandated, but the process that we use requires the chemical to take the iron out of the water. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, the Honorable Denise Ford. That's not ignored. We're looking into it, and, and, and 
we have plans in the works to actually try and fix it. And I appreciate that. I appreciate your response on that. But then let's start looking at that maybe it can't be in the lobby that has this historical significance, that maybe that we look at another entrance, you know, just provide no, something. It's the entire building yeah. that's historically significant, not just the lobby. Yeah. But I mean, with that, then, you know, like then have them and make it a priority because, you know, what it's, we're lucky, you know, we're all fortunate for all of us that we can take our own two legs. We have our moms that work that can pull open the door. We can walk ourselves into these buildings. We don't have to, you know, we can park all the way down by the boardwalk and still make it here into the city hall. But I think about the various residents, you know, whether or not you're elderly and you can't pull something open, or you have a baby carriage or you're somebody in a wheelchair, you know what, that's not, we have to, this can't be something that we decide and we're gonna do in the future. This is something I truly believe that we have to do now. And the fact is that the federal, federal government should help you because if they gave you this type of money, then they should give you some money to help you design so this. It, it, would, it would be great. Yeah. Uh, I'll put you in touch with yeah. the state agency that we're dealing with, through Commissioner yeah. Miranda. It would be great yeah. if you assist us navigating for them oh. to permit us to do the work. Let me know because I, I'll tell you, I'm not, I really am not shy, okay? And I will, if I have to, I will go there myself and I'll talk myself right there. I look forward to going with okay. you. Okay. It's a change. Right, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of the sewage treatment, um, I know uh, Rob Agostisi has been working diligently on that, and that's something we want to move as quickly as possible. And of course, we're going to do public hearings, and but as fast as we can move on that is, is our intention, just like the lobby. But it's also important because, you know, yep. the residents themselves. No, everybody. Well, right. not just Long Beach, all the residents involved. But, yes. I know there's a lot of issues, and I have to, you know, Commissioner Miranda has been really doing his due diligence too. I, I, you know, I, I'm not trying to step on his toes. But also, you know, the fact is that as you're moving forward, when you're, you're negotiating, you're doing everything, this may be something that maybe the residents themselves don't want. You know, maybe, you know, and I know that you've invested money in, the soup, in our street treatment plan to upgrade it, you know, but just to be able, because I think that if you really let people know what we're doing and what's going to happen, I mean, because you're looking at the, the channel, that's what's and, and think about yeah. like people have concerns, and like you know they're going to go from this good possibility that instead of when they call up and the line isn't working, you know they may not get the city worker that they were used to having. They may have to call and then well, have somebody from Suez, you know. I mean, the, well, no, that would be just the plant workers. We still have our own sanitation. I mean, uh, our, our own, but our, our you don't know. Us. That's not. We did, we, we did yeah. make an agreement with yeah. the local CSCA about yeah. the workforce that might be involved that it can't necessarily speak to, but right. it was a year or so. Ago. But we need to make sure that yeah. we, have, we have that. Because, but regionally, you know, it's like, probably the biggest project that could happen yeah. regionally yeah. Uh, to protect our waterways yeah. and to finally well, clean up our channel. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not arguing about it. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. I'm just saying that I would feel more comfortable if the residents were more aware of yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Heller. I just think while well, you're coming up, I, I, this is just a, I think we just need to make clear for the um, the employees who work at the facility that the CSEA and the city entered into an agreement over a year ago to ensure that as a result of any potential consolidation that actually takes place, that there will not be any uh, layoffs or anybody <coughs> would lose their jobs. So I know that there are folks that are watching and, and I don't want them to be concerned that while we want to move forward with the project, it's an important environmental project for our community, regionally as well. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the county and for the city, uh, as well as the town, that we take uh, steps to ensure that our workforce is protected. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Jennifer Heller, uh, East Wallen, East Wallen. Um, First of all, I, I'm a, not a frequent uh, engineer because of work and family obligations, and I know you all have a very difficult job, so I apologize that the only time you see me when I have something to complain about. Um, but I do have some concerns to share with you. Um, in the long term, I think we still have this trajectory where our costs continue to escalate, and you know we, we can only generate so much revenue from taxpayers and different things, and I, I would just like to hear from Maybe not today, but in the long run, any council member that have ideas of how we can really put the business path uh, right. Um, another concern is it's going back a while now. There were there were allegations at least of improper payouts. I don't know where that investigation is. If it's concluded, if no wrongdoing has been found, is it ongoing? Um, that's a concern that I have. Obviously, since uh, you know corrective action uh, should be taken, I have a concern that we don't have uh, a city manager. And uh, Mr. Tiger, I don't mean that as disrespect to you. You could probably, like anybody else, uh, admit that it's a full-time job. Um, and I just have a, a suggestion. I might be in the minority, but perhaps we should change the idea that the 
city manager needs to live in Long Beach. Perhaps there's a the most qualified candidate for our residents might choose to live in adjacent city, so perhaps we should consider shelving that idea. Uh, it's a nice idea, but perhaps it's not practical. Um, and I think, you know, young Rona probably stated it most eloquently, in light of all these complicated issues, um, I think it's really important that you all work together. Not in secret. And I know personally that in this, you know, in this sort of charged political environment, it's very difficult to sit across the table from people that you disagree with. I talk politics with friends, family, I lose my temper. I'm, I'm going to admit it. It's natural. But you got to, we're long, we're friends, we're neighbors, kids go to the same school, we run into each other in the grocery store. Got to get over it, put it aside, and make an extra effort to reach out to your fellow council members and make sure they're included in the discussions. And you don't have to like each other, but you do have to, you do have to get along. Thank you. Thank you. So I would just say, in terms of the uh, uh, earned leave obligation payments, uh, that's still under review by the uh, New York State Controls Office. So we're waiting to take any action based on their report. Uh, so we're, that's still pending. Um, City manager, yeah, uh, it's for sure. I think the five of us will agree that um, having that requirement uh, definitely limits the pool of applicants, um, and I think that was something that we had to deal with um, for sure. Um, and I do appreciate the comments about working together, and I do agree with you. Thank you, uh, Miss Allison Blanchett.
Councilman Abramo, you can't even control your employees, which brings me to this. Have you guys had a discussion about changing over the city council president and vice president? Because I seriously suggest that Mandel and Bendo step up because you're the only two who are not running for offices here, and we know that you're going to be wielding your power as president and vice president to exploit city resources on your campaign. Thank you, Ms. You're welcome. Did you want to answer anything? I will. I'll finish with you to sit down. Um, so I'll, I'll answer one of the questions about the PR firm and Ryan uh, taking over for Gordy. No one took over for Ryan. So Ryan has two jobs now. So to relieve some of that pressure and increase our communications with the public, we thought about bringing on a PR firm. So, did you like to uh, yes, uh, purely uh, this is just about the procurement on fair boxes on the bus. I'm actually helping to lead that effort. We, we ended up not, not going with uh, the procurement firm. I mean, Where's the money? Up. We have a great opportunity. It's going to be grant funded to procure these fare boxes. We have a great opportunity coming up. We're collaborating with some great agencies. We're in a position where we can't say anything right now, but when we will, I think you're, you're going to be very, very, very good. Where's the money? Mr. Eddie Barona. No, it's the old Barona. Say Junior. Just said Eddie. My understanding the calendar is published on Friday, prior to the meeting. Is that correct? So the calendar yeah, the agenda took them. There's 31 pages. Of that, 14 of them are financial information regarding the refinancing. And almost the full first page is about the refinancing, which is very poorly worded. Three paragraphs doesn't tell anything about risk and going forward. I asked a simple question because the first sentence out of council today was that this, these numbers are incorrect, that there was going to be greater savings, which is fantastic. However, my question was, at what cost? <coughs> was there any, I called it breakage, any upfront cost? This I tried try to explain it, but not to my liking. And, quite frankly, her answer took up most of my time. So my question to the rest of the council is then, was there any risk in this refinancing? Is there any, are these bonds at fixed rates? Or are they at fluctuating rates? Does anybody know? Nobody asked a question on the council before you voted. I don't know how you refinance something and not answer that question. Because if you have that risk, it doesn't make any sense. So, she voted on a $12 million refinancing. Nobody really asked any questions. The explanation was poor. I sit on a lot of, of, of private boards. I would never vote on anything unless I knew all the risks involved in it. And I don't think it was aired properly with my maybe one minute of time, and maybe my son's half a minute of time about the financial uh, status of the, uh, of the city. So I think next time, maybe if you're doing another one, you should lay it out a little better and maybe talk about it a little bit more for $12 million. That's my comment. So, let me get to the next one. Just for your information, there, there's a dialogue that takes place uh, I'll just give you, for example, in my case, mm -hmm. I went through several rounds of questions with Ms. Hightower via email. She would answer, I'd ask more questions based on the answers, and that went back and forth. I also had a, um, a uh, financial services lawyer that I know, I asked them to take a look at, at the information that was included, and they thought, what was in there was perfectly reasonable. So while you don't know all that information, that was the due diligence I did to convince myself that this was okay. I, that's good. I understand and I read this, right? And the numbers correspond to the three paragraph summary. But the first sentence was these numbers are wrong. 
Well, they were just projections, that's why. And it was in the memo, not in the ordinance. And bonds are not loans, so it operates a lot differently. Okay, but the bonds have premium costs. And I don't miss our, I don't miss I tell answer that it's all wrapped up in there. Not really. Um, well, she did to the five of us liking, she did, so. But right, Mr. Ronald, your, your time is up. I understand it. Thank you. For, for, the, for the public to understand it, you should explain it better. That's all I'm saying. I understand. Thank you. I think you. we agree that it should be explained, but just once again, point of information, all of us did research. All of us reached out via email. Uh, in addition to that, we also met um, with Ms. Hightower prior to this meeting this evening because all of us obviously really feel strongly with respect to presenting a, yet another bond to our residents. And so I just wanted to let you know that all of us worked hard to make sure that we had the answers before we moving forward with this vote. Again, Councilor Moore, uh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm you saying you're not communicating it to us so that we have confidence in Point, you. point taken, Mr. Brown. Thank you. It doesn't seem like it. Ms. Hesham. Eileen Hesham, Long Beach. Um, first, I'd like to agree with everybody else that the five of you should work together. It just sounds so often that you're not. Uh, when Ms. Diamond was talking about we, with all her understanding, it sounded like we was three people, not five. Um, I wasn't here when you chose Roth to be the new acting city manager. And I'm just wondering, when Mr. Tagney steps down tomorrow morning, does Roth automatically become acting city manager, or does he have to be sworn in or something? He'll be sworn in. When will that be? I tomorrow? Nine nine one. Oh, he's here tomorrow. OK. Yes. Um, during this last year, when we had no comptroller, the question came up, why aren't we getting somebody? And the answer several times was, we shouldn't really hire a comptroller in an important position like that while we have an acting uh, city manager, and we should wait until we have a full-time city manager. So my question is, does that mean that we won't have a comptroller until we have a full-time, not acting city manager? I don't believe so. I think Rob has a plan to hire a comptroller. So it's okay for that acting city manager, but not the past acting city manager to choose? I mean, I can take that. It doesn't make sense. I think I'll stand here for my three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vinicius.
Because I wasn't a part of the conversation. So I'm just trying to find out when did this take place. No one asked me if I was available, not available, or if I died at eight or not. So I just want to know. I received calls yesterday from a few different council members, and three members were not prepared to vote on it. So I asked the Commissioner Tagli to pull the item. Commissioner Tagney did send us a notification. After the fact, but in terms of other, the council having a conversation about it, um, obviously, I agree with whoever the three are, I, I assume it could be any of the three who were here, that this needed to be removed. Um, but it was just a notification to have the hearing. Right, and that's what we were discussing. In the public forum, have that discussion about whether it's, uh, what was the phrase you used, uh, to, to democratic or not. Right. So, so well, that's what the hearing is for. But once we have the conversation before it's even placed on the agenda, that's the, that's the issue. It, it's just, it's about a principle. Yeah, but, I mean, to, to be fair, most of these items, did you know we were getting chemicals voted on? We didn't know that either, right? We get our agenda on Friday, just like the rest of the public, and we are able to talk about it at that point. There's a big difference between getting chemicals and actually shifting and changing the entire culture in terms of how we do business and how we share information. This was a very important item because of what... Which is why it merits a hearing. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is that we need to have that conversation beforehand because it sends out a poor message to anyone who happens to read this on Friday that we were going to in some way decide that three people would make a decision and that would in some way silence different um, faces. Can, can I just ask though, if there's another way it's been operating for the last three years that if we want an item on the agenda that three council members can move to get something on or three can get something off. That's pretty much how we've been operating. But like I said, that's the merits of it can be discussed at a hearing. Hopefully we'll discuss it. Harkin? Is that right? So there currently, the city currently has a bathroom that's being put in on the beach on Minnesota. Do you guys know this project we're talking about? Yes. Um, I live on Minnesota and the, nobody on the block has been notified of this going on. Some of us found out by your house shaking as you starting the construction. Um, and I was just wondering, why was the way notified? If you're saying that they were, can you tell me when and exactly how they were notified? Um, and then also, I did hear that this project was originally put on Virginia Avenue and then moved to Minnesota. So if that's true, for what reason was it moved? And why was it moved to Minnesota? Why is that the block that's chosen? There's a number of issues that come with this. You get traffic on the street, on the beach, problems after hours. You guys don't have to be policing this until six o'clock. There's gonna be tons of people coming out of this place. Uh, not to mention pollution and then property value. You know, I like living down here, but having riffraff come and go all day, all night, doesn't help. So you help me out with some of those answers that Okay, so I think, I think Commissioner Miranda can talk about it. Um, but while he's coming up, I'll just say that it is definitely going to be locked at 6 o'clock, um, and it will only be open during the beach hours. And the beach is only open until 6 o'clock or sundown, but there's still people there after hours too, so now you're giving them a structure they're going to. Just a little history on the, the whole Virginia Avenue uh, bathroom. The Virginia Avenue bathroom originally was a lifeguard headquarters or a lifeguard workstation. Uh, when Chauncey's was open, for those old enough to remember Chauncey's, uh, that was the bathroom everybody used on the West End. Uh, when Chauncey's was sold, uh, well actually they were going to build a bathroom in front of Chauncey's originally, but Chauncey's asked not to build the bathroom uh, and will let people continue to come into the bar to use the bathroom whether they are patrons or not. Uh, when Chauncey's closed, the the, the Junior Avenue lifeguard station was converted to a bathroom to be open during beach hours. The Department of Health requires us to have one bathroom on the West End in order to stay at public beach. 
Uh, at the Sandy, that structure was washed away. And since Sandy, we've been using temporary structures there that we need to permit each year. The DEC has told us they will not give us permits for those in perpetuity to continue to have a bathroom there. Uh, knowing that we have to build a new bathroom, the new requirements would require that that bathroom be built above the base flood elevation. Um, so that meant building the bathroom over the dune. We looked at all the structures and tried to look for a midpoint on, on the west end. Uh, we found that there were two residential structures, one in Tennessee, one at uh, multifamily structures at Tennessee and Minnesota. Uh, we decided we could build a bath walk Minnesota closer to the multifamily residential building that's there, so they wouldn't block the views of any of the single-family homes that lie along the beach. Uh, we, um, did, I did go to two different civic associations, presented uh, artist renderings of the building, it's a low-profile building. Uh, it'll be built off the, uh, the main deck. Uh, we did um, uh, bring it up at the last year's budget meeting, and it was approved in the budget. And in addition, the, the unit is being uh, financed uh, or paid for by FEMA. Uh, so uh, it turned out to be the best location. In terms of the operation of the bathroom itself, the deck will be off, will come around the bathroom and be on the opposite side of where the crossover is over the tomb. The bathroom will only open on Memorial Day. It will close at six o'clock when the beach closes. The, um, and will close again in Labor Day permanently for the winter. It's not an all year round bathroom. In addition, there will be a camera that will be tied into uh, the city uh, uh, cameras that we have all the boardwalk at City Hall and will be monitored. So uh, there shouldn't be any, any issues. We located the building so that it's not in front of the building, and it's not in front of any residential homes. It's a low profile building, so it should really uh, not become an issue. And in terms of the view, you mentioned you've been to two civic meetings. How was it received at the, I assume that's West End oh, Neighbors? I went to West End Neighbors and West Home, and uh, I thought it was received fairly well. Obviously, there were always concerns, particularly if anybody lived on Minnesota. Uh, additionally, uh, one of the other issues, uh, we do have four streets that we use to tell, sell tickets. Those generally are higher traffic streets. We will not be selling tickets at the Minnesota crossover, so people will need a ticket to get on there, but the public will not be able to buy tickets there. Uh, generally, those other four streets get heavy traffic for tickets, and that tends to be where people will go for, for the bathrooms. Uh, we did do vibration uh, monitoring while the, the piles were being driven. Uh, and they were met all of the uh, vibration requirements. It may have been disturbing, but uh, should not cause any damage. So that was a requirement of the contract. Thank you, Commissioner. I hope that answers some of your questions. Uh, Ms. Stephanie Klein.
over to it, sort me out. And they said, yeah, we have to help other people. And I looked around, and I said, there are no other people. And even if other people walked in, there are three other people to take care of those other people, which not, none of them after me showed up. I, I was really shaking, and the guard came like right up to my face. Anyway, I left. Uh, I had to sit in my car to gain my composure and very upset. I couldn't believe what had just happened to me. Um, I went to pay my taxes bill the other day, visiting my horse from satellite office. I paid all my taxes and I asked the girl, where, I have a question about the taxes, where do I go? Oh, go down the hall. So I said, Grace, buy my taxes. Fine. I go in, here's Grace. Baseball jacket on, which first of all I find very unprofessional clothes to wear to work in that position. And he's just chit chatting with the girls at the desk, obviously not busy. Uh, and I said, Oh, great, I'm glad you're here because, you know, I have some questions. And I said, Is it okay if I sit down? Oh, no, my goodness, it's okay. Anyway, uh, he was very nasty. He said, I don't have to answer any of your questions. Your time is up, and if you're not at this office, but in five minutes, I will call the police. With that, he turned his back to me, walked into his office. I said, you know, I can see you sitting and shoving me at your computer, staring there doing nothing. And I turned around, and there's two policemen ready to hammer out with the police on me for asking questions. I'm like, really? I was so shaken up. I, all I want to do is ask questions. And now I have two police officers ready to escort me out of the building. So I said, well, I would like to go to the fifth floor and lodge a complaint. Uh, unfortunately, your time is up, man. And there's a lot more speakers that are going to speak. But I just have one question. The satellite office was through the county? Is that what the, was that something through the county? Yes. At Nickerson? Nickerson. Okay. Okay. okay, well, um, I can tell you that we're going to find out what, what happened. Um, you know, we don't want any of our residents to feel like they can't uh, speak to our residents. And Ray Flammer has an outstanding reputation. Uh, he's sitting right over there. Um, and uh, Where is he? He's sitting, sitting right over here. He has an outstanding reputation, and, and he's well, fantastic at his job. So I'm surprised to hear it, but uh, we'll, we will find out what the issue is. Yeah, and as you Thank heard, you. I was treated very gently. And yep. just to, you know, I can even, I can look back. That, that is unfortunate. That is your time. We do have a lot more. Can I just say one more thing? Just please wrap it up. Okay. I said, okay, Ray. I know you're too busy. I researched all of my neighbors in the blocks around me, and you know, there's big discrepancies. And he made me be. He made my house in Long Beach be thirty-five thousand dollars more than that in county. And I had it all written down, all the discrepancies, and yet he didn't want to hear me. He was too busy, and he called the police. So, I'm sorry, that that was your experience, and we will find out what actually happened. Thank you. I feel definitely thank you. and not heard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's helping. Uh, Mr. Ron Paginini.
would prepare and repair one of the best buses to make sure it passes a physical inspection. I had asked about the last physical inspection this past November. They told me that the bus had failed due to an air leak in, in the system. But the inspector gave the city time to fix the leak before he left. It finally passed. You were right, Mr. Allen. But as far as the maintenance and repair records, that's the paperwork, they failed. And the city of Long Beach was notified on the week of the 22nd of January. Also, they told me the city was under investigation. I asked, what was the, what was the worst thing that could happen to the city? They said that their operator's license could be suspended or revoked. This is what they told me. They thanked me for my input and said after speaking with me, things started to make sense about the past failed inspection. That's the paperwork inspection, that's not the bus. It's two separate things. Members of the city council has the city manager showing you the failure. It's a notice that the paperwork was tainted. That, that the notice was that received on January 22nd that the manager showed you because he got it. Probably not. The fact that when the fire department decided it was safer for their people and the public to privatize the maintenance instead of bringing it to the city garage for a cost of $80,000 a year proves my case. There's something wrong there. There's something wrong in the city garage. It's not working. As far as Mr. Robinson canceling those money machines in 2012, 2013, and never replace them, you're going on six years where there was no money machines. There was no calculation. People were still, we were losing money. And we still don't have machines. Whose fault is that? But again, there's a failure here. I want you to look into it. And I'm a, I, I might have to foil this record because you said you passed. That's what I'm told. That's well, what we're well this, told. like I said, yep. there's two things the inspection of a bus and then the paperwork. Okay. If there's something, a, a word wrong, you fail. Thank you, Mr. Pachini. Thank you, and, and I'm going to find out and uh, see if I get those pass records. Thank you. Thank you. Kraminski. Uh, George Kraminski? He left. Kraminski, he left? Yeah, uh, Ms. Mary Bolsach. Thank you, Mr. Gustin. Mary Bolsach, Long Beach. Um, I'm sitting here listening last meeting, this meeting. It seems like five people that we elected are not working together. Do you want uh, the community to trust and believe you, but then you sit here and this one doesn't know this, but this one knows everything, but this one doesn't right. want to share it with this one. Yes. It, 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 I'm, I'm like in a sandbox. I'm in the sandbox and nobody's playing nice. And I really think it's a discredit to the residents who elected you. And I'm not gonna keep harping on this, but you have to realize that we put our trust in you and, and you have, usually you have to earn trust. You get it by votes. And quite honestly, I haven't seen you, it's like there, there is a fraction here that just wants to work together. And I don't care what you say or how you say it. And there are people being left out. And that number eight that was on there, people took it just like that, that you were trying to hold two people out. You have either got to work together or you won't be working together. It's quite that simple. Thank you, Ms. I would just say that all items tonight passed unanimously. Uh, Heather, I'm sorry, is it Lucati? Lucati? Lucata. Lucata, sorry. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, Jenny. I should be fast, and I'm not minded by reading and everything organized. My comments tonight are not any political nature or anything part of the agenda that we've heard tonight. My family has called Long Beach home since the 30s, and now I am the last member still here. 
I've never had an interest in local politics, never felt I needed to pay attention, because in my mind, the people currently running the show had to be just like their predecessors of years ago. While not all politicos of the past shared the same party or even agreed on specific topics, I took comfort in knowing they all had an instinctive camaraderie when it came to representing our city and the residents. On the early morning hours of January 5th, exactly one month ago today, a horrific accident occurred on Park Avenue. I had only heard about it through social media with no knowledge of details. On January 17th, 12 days after this accident occurred, I made the gruesome discovery that not only were the two victims the parents of longtime friends and colleagues, but shockingly, no one from our government reached out to represent us and express condolences on the loss of Julie Morales and her husband, Mo, who is alive, thank God. Adding insult to injury approximately five to six days after Julie was laid to rest, a very vanilla condolence message suddenly appeared on social media. Today I stand here disappointed and embarrassed. The people we elected to govern and represent us as a community could not come together if for just one time to do the human thing and to convey the condolences of our city and its residents to a grieving family. The lack of empathy shown is shocking, and the optics basically stink. This is not who we are, and I really felt that the community needed to know that there was absolutely no reach out from anyone here to this family. Thank you. Ms. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, that's... I apologize. On behalf of five of us, I know Councilman Mandel is going to speak with you, but I certainly do apologize. I don't think that was the intent of anyone in this building or anyone on this board. Um, but I do, I do apologize. Um, unfortunately, on that note, that's that's the uh, end of tonight's meeting. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. I'd like to thank everyone for sharing their thoughts and concerns. Please get home safe.